Dow and the S&P 500 closed at all-time high. What if I told you that you could turn your love of wine into an investment return? We're seeing prices go up higher than they've ever been. Should you forget gold and invest in vino? I mean, the bottom line is if you want to own a fine and rare wine collection, the time to buy is right now. Did you sell 1961 Chateau Lafleur? I can taste the Chardonnay in the palate. Did you sell one or more 1961 Chateau Lafleur Magnums? I thought it was a little forward. Who inspected these bottles? I've got an Elderflower Perfumes GC. Bright and leafy. This is that whole power of suggestion thing, right? Did you have any reason to suspect that the wine was counterfeit? Wine is alive. It's not a beverage. It's not a tool. It's not a table or a plate or a car. It's alive. Vous voyez comme les cèpes de vigne sont tout, tout tordus, tout tortueux. C'est assez original. C'est un type de, de taille en plus qui ne se fait pratiquement plus. On appelait ça la taille en gobelet. Avec le temps. Les branches ont poussé, puis ça fait un peu de, des statues. Euh, C'est assez fantasmagorique, euh, surtout à cette époque où il y a du brouillard. Mais euh, c'est aussi une partie de notre histoire. I am Laurent Ponceau, winemaker, vigneron in Burgundy. I was born above a cellar in this village in Morais Saint Denis in a family that is owning this winery since 1872. You feel here what I call the spirit of the vines. As soon as I started to breathe, I had the smell of wine. <laughs> and I can say I have some blood in, in my wine, not some wine in my blood. The spirit of Burgundy wines is unique with the name on the label representing not only a wine, but a culture and history. What people are seeing, feeling behind the wine has no price. $1,600, quarter bitter, 105.3. Lot 982, Romanate Comte, 72, two bottles, wow, 9,005, 10,000. $10,000 bid now for these and 10. At $10,000, give me 11. At $10,000. $10,000 now for 10,000. 11,000 these now for 11. Give me 12. 11,000. $11,000 I have now at 11,000 in the orders. Boom, 1019. I guess the auction scene really started in the 90s in the dot com boom. Everybody was making money. They developed this culture of very wealthy collectors um, gathering at these auctions to see and be seen, uh, to be seen bidding. Uh, the prices started to really escalate. 5,005 go six. 5,005 last call at 5,500. Pass then at 5,500. 987. I started to get these emails. It was strange. I couldn't really figure out where they were coming from. They described these evenings where these guys, very wealthy collectors, were drinking like 1945 Romani Conti and 1955 Petrus, you know, really, really expensive wine. I eventually learned that these emails were coming from John Capon, the head of the auction house, Acker Merrill Condit. OWC 12 bottles of 1990 Romani Conti. Cape One's notes were very colorful. He had these unusual descriptors, trying to make the whole tasting note more interesting and developing new metaphors. This culture kind of reached its apogee under the auspices of Acker Merrill Condit, and 
this group called the Angry Men, all of whom had nicknames like Mr. Angry and Big Boy and Hollywood Jeff. We missed the tequila party last night, but you know. I think it was worth it. It was worth it, yeah. I drank a lot of that 1907 Madeira last night. It, was, it had a lot of layers, that, that wine. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was coconut, it was nutmeg, espresso. Yeah, it was, it was really Exciting. layered, wasn't it? I think the 88 has so much acidity, uh -huh. it's, it can be incredible. But it's a more hit or miss vintage the than the 88 90. has a huge amount of acidity. No, that's absolutely right. 96, though, is the vintage to buy. For anyone out there, buy 96 champagne all day. If you can't afford that, buy O2. If you can't afford that, drink fucking beer. The best way to taste high-end wines is with a group, because there's power in numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Wines are really, really expensive. And so our group meet eight times a year. Each time one member hosts and does the wines from his cellar. Thank you guys drink too much together. <laughs> Where the Angry Men name came from is you get invited to a wine dinner and you bring a really nice, a great bottle of wine, okay? And everybody else brings shit wine, bad wine. And so you get very angry. And <laughs> It was men who didn't want to be angry anymore, and everybody had to bring it, you know? You had to really bring it. Thank you very much. My entry into Burgundy was Rudy Kernuan. There was an angry man that Rudy had invited me to. And that's where I met that whole gang. Their dinners were always over the top, crazy. Breaking it out with like 100, 200 grand worth of wine in a, in a night, it was pretty extraordinary. What these guys actually had, it's what Americans call fuck you money. Well, I got a $3 million bonus. I'm gonna take a million of that and blow it. And that's their fuck you money. They're gonna do whatever they want with it. They don't care. There's no consequences. And it's a, it's a ki kind of money that most human beings never experience. Uh-oh, here she comes. <laughs> the fine wine world, it's really mostly men. Especially when I was younger. I'd walk into the tastings and everybody would immediately ask, you know, whose state I was. But I had an important job. I ran a major auction house in New York. I bought like $50,000 worth of champagne in the last auction for one of my clients because his daughter's getting married. So we have it was 2000 or early 2001. We were doing auctions and I started being aware of this kind of, you know, skinny, geeky, young guy that liked wine. 